Well, why don't we try some practice problems? Let's start with some problems that your instructor went over in the lecture. All right. We haven't had a chance to go over problem solving techniques here, so I wouldn't expect you to be able to solve these, but I'd like you to just take a minute right. to start thinking and working on this, and at the end of a minute, we'll go through it together. But take a minute. So our goal here is, given this information, mm -hmm. so we've been given this molecular formula and this spectrographic information, and we're trying to figure out what the structure of the molecule is. Okay. So go ahead and just take a minute to, to do the best you can on that, and then we'll just go through it together. Let's work through this together now so that we can find some of the problem solving techniques for these types of problems. Although it looks like we're already taking a guess as to what the structure might be. Let's go through this together now. Okay. <clears throat> as I said, our goal here is to learn the problem solving techniques that you'll need to use to solve these on your own. One thing to notice is that we were given the molecular formula. Now, anytime we're given the molecular formula, our very first step should be to calculate the degrees of unsaturation. Okay. The first thing we should do here is calculate this degrees of unsaturation, which your instructor calls the index of hydrogen deficiency. Well, that would be 2 times the number of carbons. Well, the number of carbons here was 5. Plus the number 2. The number of nitrogens here was 0. The number of halogens was 0. But we have to subtract the number of hydrogens, which was 10. Plugging into this formula, we would get this. I came out with one. Does that match what you're getting? Mm -hmm. One degree of unsaturation. Now, how do we interpret that? That means that the number of pi bonds plus the number of rings equals one. This tells us that the number of pi bonds plus the number of rings equals 1. What does that mean? That means that the molecule might have one pi bond and no rings or it might possibly have no pi bonds and one ring. Based on the degrees of unsaturation, we can't be any more specific yet. We know there's either one pi bond or one ring, but we can't have both. Okay. This is a very important habit. Anytime, any problem where you're just given the molecular formula, you should start by using this degrees of unsaturation. That always gives us helpful information. Now let's try to summarize the information that we were given. How many peaks did we get here? Mm, I didn't quite finish up. Well, well, let's just look at the spectrographic data and ask oh, okay. how many peaks we were yeah. given here. We four. And let's look a little bit more carefully. Yeah. Notice that this peak is just a blow up of this one. You can tell that because oh, they okay. said this was a delta of 1.07, mm -hmm. and this is just a blow up of that delta of 1.07. And here this had a delta of 2.42, and this is just a blow up of that. Mm -hmm. So does it make sense that we really got two peaks? Two peaks. Now, what was the delta for the first peak? Or uh, this peak. The delta for this peak is 2.42. Mm -hmm. And 
what's the multiplicity for that peak? Singlet, triplet, doublet? You don't actually have to it's count. A, it's a uh, quartet. That's right. You can see that by looking at the blow-up, but you can also just look at this letter here. The letter Q here is designed to tell us that this okay. is a quartet. <coughs> and what was the integration? Well, here's this integration curve. The integration curve is separate from the peaks, and this gave us a total area of 33. This tells us that the area represented by this peak is 33. So we can summarize this information by saying this area is an area of 33. Now let's do the same thing for the other peak. What was the chemical shift for the other peak? Okay, um, let me Great, take a comment. Are we going to give uh, alphabetical indicators to these to set, keep them separate, or does it matter, or is there? That's a good idea. Well, we could call these group A. All right. And when you're ready, we have to do the same thing of summarizing group B. It's a triplet. <coughs> and its integration is 48. 48? Yes. Yeah, that's right. That is, that peak has an area under it of 48. Okay. This is an important step. After you find the degrees of unsaturation, you need to sum summarize the NMR data. You don't want to just be staring all the time at your printout, because the printout is kind of confusing. Instead, you need to summarize these three pieces of information. Chemical shift, multiplicity, which is the amount of splitting, and integration or area. And I would recommend always writing that like this. structure of the molecule is. Okay. What was the molecular formula? I, I C5H10O. Good. One thing to notice here is even though there's 10 hydrogens, there was only two peaks. Even though there's 10 separate hydrogens, there's only two peaks. Does that seem to indicate that the molecule has a lot of symmetry or a lot of asymmetry? We don't really have many peaks here. Uh, it has a lot of symmetry. We saw last time that the more symmetry there are, there is the more equivalent hydrogens there are and the less peaks there would be. So we would expect this to be a fairly symmetrical molecule. Let's figure out what the ends are here. What would the N be for group A? It would be 3 because of the N plus 1 rule. Remember that if you're split into a quartet, that means your n plus 1 is 4. Well, if your n plus 1 is 4, your n would have to be 3. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. In that case, what would n be for our group B? Uh, 2. That's right. Something else we have to do is try to translate these areas into the number of hydrogens. We need to try to translate these areas into the number of hydrogens. Remember that the areas are proportional to the number of hydrogens. 
the areas are proportional to the number of hydrogens. Here we have a ratio of 33 to 48. 48 to 33. Let's try to reduce that ratio. Do you have your calculator with you? I didn't bring it today, but I have my, I have my handle. Are you going to get to use a calculator on the test? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Now, when I did this division, you got 1.45. That's approximately 1.5, right? 